let's dive in. Let me officially welcome you to the Lead X show. Thanks. So I always ask uh, my guests the same first question, regardless of what kind of book they've written or, or what they're doing. And the question is this, what leadership advice would you give to a first time manager, someone less experienced, but who really wants to succeed as a leader? Okay, I'm going to give them two pieces of advice, if that's okay. Yeah. First of all, um, you have spent up, up to now, most of your career working on being really good at a technical area. You might be good at programming, you might be good at sales or whatever. Nowadays, your job is about the people. It's about helping other people around you to get their jobs done rather than you essentially being the expert yourself. So you've got to make that mental switch. Uh, and the other piece of advice I'm going to give is know yourself. In other words, the very best leaders and even the half best leaders are the people who are able to figure out the impact that they have on other people, if you see what I mean. So, you know, you need a coach sometimes. You need a little bit of good advice to figure out what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, so that you don't fall into those usual sort of traps of a first time leader. Brilliant. Brilliant. So Julian, your new book again is Mind Tools for Managers, 100 Ways to Be a Better Boss. Uh, and is this book specifically related to the website mindtools.com? It is. My co-author is James Mantelow. He founded that website about, gosh, almost 20 years ago. Wow. Um, and it's become a very successful website. Uh, and he and I decided to collaborate. I've known him for years to turn a lot of those tools on that website into a, a single coherent management book. Yeah. And I love that. And for the listeners out there, uh, you know, we've done uh, over 200 uh, leadership authors and some of the books can be very theoretical. This is great because it's very applied. You could almost randomly turn to any page in the book and get actionable advice. And there's so much material from uh, know and manage yourself to managing tasks and getting things done to how to work effectively with other people. Obviously we don't have time to uh, dig into all of this, but I wanted to dive in a little bit more deeply into tool 55, which is delegating effectively. So why yeah. is delegating so important? Yeah. I mean, delegating is the heart of being an effective boss. Um, you know, because most of us like to be in control, right? Most of us like this feeling that I know exactly what's going on. And so when my boss asks me, I can answer all the difficult questions. The trouble is that if you know absolutely everything, what that means is you're doing everything. Um, and it does not come naturally to us to give work away, to say to a colleague, here is an important task. I want you to figure out how to do it themselves. So delegating is the heart of the job. And yet, most of us just don't do it. We don't take the time to structure the project and work of our subordinates in a way that makes that work interesting and valuable. And that's the, that's the key, because in order to delegate effectively, you've actually got to take a little bit of time to figure out what it is that you're asking someone to do. You don't just say, do this, do this, do this. That's not delegation. That is actually micromanagement. So tell me more about that. That That's a great yeah. way you phrased it. You know, yeah. delegation yeah. is different than micromanagement. It's not just telling yeah. someone to do something. So how yeah. should we be delegating a, a task or a project? Yeah. I mean, the starting point is, is, is dead simple. Put yourself in the eyes of your, in, in, the, in the shoes of your employee. And what, what is it that gets them out of bed? You know, what, why do they come to work? In a, and there's lots of very well-known research which says look they want a little bit of freedom they want a freedom to to come up with their own tasks their own way of doing things their own problems to solve they like to have a chance to develop their own skills they need to have a sense that they are doing something which links to a higher purpose all of those things are what you were trying to do management is getting work done through other people enabling them to do their best work and so if you think about it and you try to find ways of actually taking jobs breaking them down making them interesting, you will get untold of bounties from your subordinates because finally they've been given a real job to do. And it is so easy to fall into the trap of, of as I say, managing them by giving them tiny little tasks right. to do. If they don't understand those tasks, they can't bring their own creativity to bear in those tasks. That's great. So delegation was one of my favorite uh, tools in the book. What's yeah. one of your favorite tools in the book? 
Oh, crikey. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I like to start with the, uh, the tools around managing yourself, making yourself much more aware of your own strengths and weaknesses. And, and look, you can do that through a personal SWOT analysis, if you like. But, but the heart of it is saying, you know, I've got to the stage in my career where I know pretty well now there are things that I'm very good at. And there are things, quite frankly, that either I'm not good at or I just I'm not that interested in. Mm -hmm. And actually drawing up that inventory of these are the things I'm good at. These are the things I'd love to have somebody else helping me with. These are the things I need help with. Actually, that is, I think, the sort of the the step that you have to occasionally every every month or so take in order to make sure that you're doing your job well. Because having done that analysis, there's a couple of things you can do. One, obviously, is you know, genuinely take some courses or whatever to develop your skills. But the other thing you can do is, particularly if you're reasonably senior, is if you can, you can get somebody to actually take some of those jobs from you. So I, you know, I like big picture stuff. I'm not into all the detail. I can do a spreadsheet if I have to, but that's not what I want to do. So I'm in a position where I can hire a really good person to do all of that detailed financial analysis, because that's a skill that some people have and some people like doing. So building up that complementary set of skills to help you to, to essentially wrap, give yourself a rounded personality, that's, that's what you should be doing. Fantastic. Now, I'll, I'll wrap up by asking this. Julian, I tell, uh, I encourage my listeners, I say, you know, every day, try to get just a little bit better, do something new, get outside your comfort zone. So, so give us a challenge, you know, what's something that as a, as a manager, we could try out today with our team or boss or our peers? Yes. So I'll give you two. Um, thing number one is take a look at your schedule for the day or week ahead, identify I don't know, five hours worth of stuff in your diary next week that somebody else could do and explicitly give those tasks to that person and structure it in the way I said. And this is the key. Spend that time consciously doing something different. Right. And, and two things here. One is actually time for personal reflection to make sure you're actually thinking about what you're doing. And then the other one is time for something a bit more strategic, the important but less urgent stuff. We've all got a list of things which we want to get to at some point. So consciously give yourself that period of time to look into the important stuff. So that was the first. The other one, very simple point, but you know we often get trapped within our company, within our industry. We often get trapped thinking about things the same old way. And so you know, find an opportunity to to cut across, to go to some either different company, to some other industry, to read something from a world that you don't usually look at. You know? And then there's loads of ways of doing that, you know, online versus friends or whatever. And you're look, seeking new experiences because ultimately you know, we get so stuck into our way of working, just that new perspective can often be a hugely valuable way of helping us to see our old problems in a new way. Wonderful. Thank you for that. So, Julian, how can our listeners find out more about uh, you and your new book? So, yeah, the uh, website is www.mindtools.com. And if you go to that website, there's an easy to click button, which takes you straight to the book. Fantastic. Thanks for taking the time to come on to the Lead X Show. You're welcome. Thanks very much. (laughs) 